Funding for The Secret Life of Scientists is provided by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. Einstein says if we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be called research. When I try something and a project just completely fails, which sometimes happens, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, the more something fails, often the more I can learn from it. Some friends and I were working on a design competition project based on having students develop things that can help soldiers survive longer in the field. And so they had requested a piece of equipment that could haul you up a rope really, really fast, just like Batman. So that thing was not very easy to build. We spent the whole first four months trying to build it, designing, testing things out in the lab, really hoping it works. It's about three in the morning, and we all just want to go home, but we finally got the thing together for the first time ever. So if you can imagine, it's kind of like a power drill, but you wrap a rope through it, attach the device to a climbing harness, and pull the trigger, it pulls you up the rope super fast. And we're dying to try it. You've just been working so hard, you're really hoping it's going to work. So we took it to a stairwell on campus. We were smart enough not to try to haul ourselves up on the first try. We figured, now if it doesn't work, we don't want to get dropped on the ground. So we took about eight water jugs out of the lab, tie them all together, and tie those to the rope that the device is on. Now we pull the trigger, and for a split second it works. It jerks them up in the air at about 10 feet per second. It's yanking these things upward, story by story, up into the stairwell. We were pumped that it was going to work. We had no idea that it would be that fast. And then the fixture point broke. And four in the morning, eight five-gallon buckets of water come crashing down. <laughs> Biggest crash noise you can ever imagine. But the exciting part was, despite the fact that those eight water bottles crashed down and almost broke the elevator, dumping water everywhere, we could see that it was going to work. So did we go back home and sleep? No, we went right back into the lab and kept working on it all night because we wanted it to work so bad. I figured out how it failed, but this part worked. Let's tweak a couple parameters. Let's change things up a little bit. We spent a lot of time going through many different iterations to build what would become the Atlas Power Ascender. And it's out there saving lives. And Oregon Native has invented a device that could help in high-risk rescue situations. Nate, you were telling me that the Army uses these right now. Yeah, we actually have a number of devices in the field right now, and it's used in combat search and rescue, helicopter extraction. I have never had a project work on the first try. When I try something, the purpose of solving the problem is to figure out something I didn't know. So, of course it's not going to work right, I don't know yet how it's going to work. You've got to build it and you've got to try it. And every time it works a little better and pretty soon you've got something brand new that could change the world. I'm a mechanical engineer and my job is to make the smallest, lightest weight, most powerful powered rope climbing device the world has ever seen. And it's got the potential to help people in many different ways, from uh, rescue situations where a first responder might haul a casualty upward off of a cliff, to soldiers uh, extracting each other very quickly from a battlefield into a helicopter, even for construction workers someday to be able to get things up into high places. We build stuff that saves lives. There's, there's nothing greater than that. I have time to spare. <laughs> Maybe I can give it another shot. I guess something that might characterize me is I like to push limits. I, I like to do stuff that's big and fast and explodes. And uh, I credit my parents, especially my father, for keeping me alive through my childhood, through such experiences as shocking myself across the chest, accidentally burning the kitchen with rocket fuel, building potato guns that could shoot through three-quarter inch plywood. I mean, I, I did a lot of stuff that maybe wasn't the best idea, but to me, nothing's more exciting than, than just being right on that edge where 
If it works, it's gonna be awesome. If it doesn't work, get it on camera because it's also gonna be awesome. Now, when I was a graduate student, we saw a pretty crazy video on the internet of a guy running up a wall and doing a backflip. We later figured out that was free running. I said to my roommate, I bet we could learn how to do that. So we spent the whole summer basically running up the wall and falling down on our backs. Running up the wall and falling down on our backs. Until we finally got the guts to go all the way back over. But we figured out how to do it and, and then kept learning more. And so now we're doing this free running stuff where you're kind of interacting with your whole environment, doing flips off of it, combining gymnastics with running around in an urban environment. I think the best thing to describe what I get from free running is that moment when you're kind of transitioning from running up the wall to flipping back over that you know you've made it. You pushed yourself mentally, you, you didn't give up halfway through the flip and land on your back, and you got it. Anytime you're a little bit scared, but you make yourself do it and you push yourself through and go through the motion that you know you have to and you come out on top, that's the greatest feeling ever. There are times when I'm scared doing problem solving. After a whole lot of time pursuing something and everything in your head tells you that it can work, but the experiment just keeps going wrong. It keeps going wrong again and again and again and you don't know why. That moment when you're kind of trying to decide, do I keep doing this experiment or should I try something else or give up, that's kind of a frightening moment. And that kind of limit pushing and making yourself do it when you, you don't feel like you should is what expands your capability and makes it so it's possible to try the next more complicated thing. Worst injury ever was a high ankle sprain. I was doing a flip, I landed, my toe got pushed all the way up to my shin because of how I landed. It took me 10 weeks to recover from it. I'd go with the Olympic gold medal, but only because there's no Nobel Prize for mechanical engineering. Barcode scanners, those things are everywhere. Intuition supported by education. Iron Man. Went to MIT, building cool stuff all the time, saving lives. Good role model. Legos. Nikola Tesla. He might not be as well known, but he's responsible for alternating current, uh, radios, countless other inventions. Into a hovering CH-46 helicopter a hundred feet above the ground in an airfield in Thailand. That was one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to do in my whole life. Nearly, because I wasn't wearing safety goggles. Trying to concoct hydrogen in my backyard so that I could explode balloons, almost blinded by science. There are a bunch of, you know, nerdy guys working on a slide rule all day. We're not sitting in cubicles, you know, we're, we're building stuff, we're doing things, we're solving problems. Engineers are all around us. 